Ooh, let's have a cup of tea. Good morning and welcome to a new video. As you can tell by the title, I've got a new tool to play with. I'm gonna try out this Mitivac MV7201 fluid extractor on an oil change on my Golf. And I think, actually I think it's pronounced Mighty Vac because it's American. Now, what is it? It's a home extraction tool. So it's a DIY fluid extractor. And if you've ever worked in a garage, they have these big metal cylinders with like air pumps or electric pumps on the side of them. And you clip a little extender over, over the end of like a, a dipstick tube and it sucks all the oil out or sucks all the coolant out, whatever you need to suck out. You clip it on and it, it makes a loud noise and it, and it comes out. This is kind of like a home DIY version with that, with like a bicycle pump on the end of it. And it makes cool noises. So this is a bit of a game changer because if you have a car that has a filter on the top, like both of my cars, the Golf and the C63, you don't need to jack the car up anymore. You can just stick this down the dipstick tube. The bottom of it hits the bottom of the, of the sump, of the oil sump, and it sucks all the fluid out. Now I say all the fluid out, it's gonna suck most of the fluid out because both of my cars have oil coolers. That is the only downside so far that I can see of this product is that because it doesn't extract full all of the fluid because there will be some left in the system. But some people could argue that actually when you drain it from the sump, that's also true because you would have to individually drain the oil cooler as well as the main sump for the engine. So, so far, I can't really see any downsides to using this. I have already broken it. This is a quick release here and it no longer releases at all, let alone quick releases. I've emailed Mitivac about that, um, but they haven't got back to me yet. So customer service is great. If this works, I don't even have to move the car to do, a, to do an oil and filter service on it. I couldn't find a lot of reviews on this product, so if you do find this helpful, please give this video a like. I have also included an Amazon link to the product in the description if you would like to purchase one. First thing I'm going to do is to check the oil level on the dipstick before taking any oil out. This gives me an idea of how much oil is in the car before I start any work. Right, there's the current level. Can you see that? Perfectly full, but uh, very, very black. You can check out the full oil and filter change video that I completed on this exact car, of which the link can be found in the top right of this video now. The Mighty Vac doesn't create an airtight seal in the dipstick tube, and so as the oil is sucked out, oxygen can gain entry into the engine to replace it. I still, however, remove the oil cap and loosen the filter out of the housing to make the oil extraction easier. Whilst removing the engine cover and vacuum lines in order to gain access to the filter housing, I found a loose screw, which I'll come back to later. Shouldn't be that loose, so I need to look at that. The Mighty Vac allows you to drastically reduce your tool investment cost for an oil change. All I used for this change was my ratchet, ratchet extension, 32 millimeter socket, and a torque wrench. All right, so now that's all loose. You put this end of the Mighty Vac, which is this big long one that goes into the top here, down the dipstick tube until you hit the bottom. It is quite hard to know where the bottom of the oil pan is as the dipstick tube has some bends and curves in it, meaning that you do have to force it down because there are a couple of false bottoms. And now we wait until uh, until that fills all the way up. Now my car, let's have a look here. How many miles have we done since the last service? Last oil change that I did? 9,953. So I put this on my Instagram the other day and it actually really interests me. How long do you guys leave it in between oil changes? Some people say like 4,000 miles. Some people say 8,000. Some people say 15,000. Let me know down below in the comments because I'm keen to find out. I think it depends on the car. This is a diesel, so I think it can go further without an oil change, rightly or wrongly. My C63, I'd do an oil change probably every three or 4,000 miles when I hit those mile markers. Right, so I think we're all done. It's drained about five liters out of it, just below five liters. So, you know, I thought it only took four, so that's interesting. I can't really remember the last time I did it, how much I put in. It might be five liters. It's making a weird sucky noise and it's not draining anything more out. So 
I think it's done. I think we probe out, new filter in, and then we're good to go to fill her up. I found myself always putting my finger over the end of the tube and pumping so as to remove any oil left in the line and to stop it from leaking out. I think the product could be improved by having a small cap or stopper over the end of the hose to prevent any spillages. New filter. And I had no idea that I pulled this face when pulling an oil filter out. Always remember to lube up your O-rings and invest in a workbench. New filter in, check the torque on the filter housing and torque it up. Right, we're gonna fill her up again. Only the finest, Castrol Edge. Oh, windy, oh no. Perfect. The little torque screw gets a dollop of medium strength thread locker as well so that we don't lose it in the future. Diesels always sound rattly like old canal boats, especially with their soundproofing off. So you can't really listen out for much here. This is just to get the new oil circulating before checking the level again and topping up accordingly. So how do you get the oil out of the Mighty Vac once you've finished with it? Well, there's two ways of doing it. You first have to relieve the pressure by pulling this valve here and you'll hear the air come out. So there's now no longer a vacuum in there. And there's a little switch on the side here. And if you push it, it reverses the pump. You can place the nozzle into your empty oil can and as you pump it it starts filling it up again so it reverses the pump no nonsense amazing The second way would be to relieve the pressure out your valve. Then you can undo this and it gives you like a, a stopper with a spout on it. And then you can just pour the fluid out there. I'm gonna try and do that without spilling any. I think normally you'd take the hose off, but my quick release broke as I mentioned earlier, so. Oh, yeah. Much quicker. Oh, I still managed to get some on the floor. Oh no. So what do I think of the Mighty Vac MV7201? I think it's brilliant. All in all, without filming, that oil change would have taken me about half an hour. That's filters, oil in, everything. And obviously the bigger capacity of your car, the more you're gonna to have to wait for the oil to come out of it and fill up this cylinder. But it's, it's brilliant, like it's chucking it down with rain now. And if it wasn't for this, I'd probably have just about finished and I'd have soaking wet feet and I'd be on my back underneath the car. I really can't see any downsides to it. For a hundred quid, it's amazing. Now, I'm not being paid to say that. There are a couple of bits wrong with it. It's kind of covered in grease and stuff because that's from the factory before I've used it. Obviously, to keep all the seals tight, they've just put loads of lube and grease on them. Also, this hose is a bit annoying. It does leak a little bit there and I can't get the quick release out of it but everything this side of these hoses is, is really good. You can check this product out in the link in my description below. I'll link the, uh, Amazon, the Amazon page that I bought it from. You know, you will save a lot of money and a lot of time if you use one of these. It's probably about the same price to buy this as it is to buy axle stands and a trolley jack. And obviously this is gonna be much safer if you're a beginner DIYer working on your car because you don't have to jack the car up in the air. So I would say for most people, this is a better bet. If you can see any downsides, let me know down below in the comments because I really can't see many. Thank you very much for watching. Please like this video if you enjoyed it. I really couldn't find many reviews on this product when I was looking for it, so hopefully this will help some of you out. If it does, please hit that subscribe button and I'll see you on the next video.